If you think of all the different mental abilities and you devise a test for each one of them, and you gave this test to a, a, a lot of people across a, the range of ability, what you'll find is the scores on all those tests are positively correlated with each other, suggesting that all tests of mental ability have something in common. Right, sure, that's a great and way of putting common it. common is this G factor, this general ability to reason. And some individual tests have more G loading than other individual tests. Right. So, yes. uh, and tests of abstract reasoning tend to be highly G-loaded. Right. If I said to you, repeat the following numbers back to me, three, seven, two, one, six, five, that's a, not a very highly G-loaded mental ability to be able to do that. But if I gave you a string like that and said, repeat them to me backwards, that becomes a G-loaded ability because right. you do a transformation. Yes, so, well, the other thing to say about that, too, is that the, the positive relationship between that those multiple assessments that you described is actually quite high. Right. Right, that's the thing, is that that general factor not only exists across domains of cognitive ability, but it tends to account for a substantial amount of the, of the ability in each of those domains. So right. it's kind of like a, G is kind of like a black hole for intelligence research and everything keeps falling into it. So, <laughs> so that's an interesting way to put it because now we have these uh, uh, genome-wide association studies that are finding uh, these bits of DNA that are related to a latent factor of intelligence, which is the G factor, or to what they call educational attainment variables. Where educational attainment is so highly correlated with IQ that's essentially the, the same thing.